हेलो एवरीवन इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द मेकैनिजम ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक्स व्हिच इनिबिट्स द सिंथेसिस ऑफ बैक्टीरियल सेल वॉल द सेल वॉल सिंथेसिस इनिबिटर एंटीबायोटिक्स मेनली इंक्लूड बीटालैक्टम एंटीबायोटिक्स लाइक पेनिसिलिन्स एंड सिपेलोस्पोरिन्स देन वैनकोमाइसिन बेसिट्रेसिन एंड साइक्लोसेरिन फ्रेंड्स द बैक्टीरियल सेल वॉल इज अ वेरी रिजिड स्ट्रक्चर दैट एनकैप्सुलेट्स द प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन ऑफ बोथ ग्राम पॉजिटिव एंड ग्राम निगेटिव बैक्टीरिया दिस पर्टिकुलर स्ट्रक्चर इज एब्सेंट इन द यूकारियोट्स सेल वॉल इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ द बैक्टीरियल सेल इट हेल्प्स इन मेंटेनिंग द शेप ऑफ द सेल देन प्रोवाइड्स ओवरऑल स्ट्रेन टू द सेल एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली इट प्रोटेक्ट्स बैक्टीरियल सेल from the osmotic rupture and lysis particularly in case of a mismatch of solutes concentration in the bacterial cell and in the extracellular medium structurally the cell wall is made up of the layers of peptidoglycan while gram positive bacteria may have up to 40 layers of peptidoglycan outside of the cell membrane in gram negative bacteria only a single layer of peptidoglycan is sandwiched between the inner cytoplasmic membrane and the outer membrane containing lipopolysaccharides the peptidoglycan layer in the cell wall is composed of cross linked chains of peptidoglycan monomers also called peptidoglycan building blocks further each peptidoglycan monomer or building block is made up of disaccharide n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine attached to a peptide chain please note that the gram positive bacterial cell has a thick peptidoglycan coat that is a cell wall on the outside of the plasma membrane and hence the cell wall inhibitor antibiotics work best against them by obstructing peptidoglycan synthesis and thus making cells leaky and fragile now let us see in brief the process of the biosynthesis of peptidoglycan in a bacterial cell wall say for example in staphylococcus aureus please note that the synthesis of building blocks of peptidoglycan occurs on the cytoplasmic side of the cell membrane initially in tripeptide side chain of udp n acetyl muramic acid amino sugar two terminal alanine residues are incorporated to ultimately form the pentapeptide side chain the cytoplasmic building blocks are hydrophilic in nature and therefore it is problematic for a bacterial cell to transport them outside through the hydrophobic cell membrane however this is achieved by linking them to a very large lipid carrier with 55 carbon atoms which can transport hydrophilic units across the cell membrane first of all the n acetyl muramic acid attached to udp and pentapeptide is transferred to a c55 lipid carrier in cell membrane with the release of ump this is followed by a merger of udp and acetyl glucosamine to form a disaccharide pentapeptide complex linked to a c55 carrier in this stage the five glycine residues are also attached to a peptide side chain here the building block is ready for the cell wall synthesis now this building block is transported to the outside of the cell membrane by c55 lipid carrier and added to the growing end of the peptidoglycan that is the acceptor thereafter in the peptidoglycan layer the cross linking between the peptide side chains of n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine occurs the hydrolytic removal of the terminal alanine provides the requisite energy during the process now after releasing the peptidoglycan building block the c55 lipid carrier gets free and ready for initiating next round however it is still has two phosphate groups attached therefore the c55 lipid loses one phosphate group and becomes available for the another cycle friends this synthesis of peptidoglycan is a vulnerable process that can be blocked at the several points by the antibiotics 
Now we will see the mechanism of action of various cell wall synthesis inhibitor antibiotics. Let us start with cycloserin. Cycloserin is a structural analog of D alanine. Therefore, it competitively inhibits the addition of two terminal alanine residues to the initial tripeptide side chain on N acetylmuramic acid. This prevents the formation of peptidoglycan building blocks and impairs the cell wall synthesis. The cell wall deficient bacteria becomes vulnerable to the osmotic lysis which ultimately results in the destruction of the bacterial cell. The next antibiotic is vancomycin. Vancomycin inhibits the release of a peptidoglycan building block from the C55 lipid carrier. Therefore, the addition of peptidoglycan monomer to the growing end of the peptidoglycan layer cannot occur. This ultimately results in the formation of cell wall deficient bacterial cell. The next antibiotic is bacitracin. Bacitracin blocks dephosphorylation of the C55 lipid carrier and thus prevents its regeneration. As a result, C55 lipid carrier will not be available for the another cycle of building block synthesis and transportation. This ultimately results in the formation of cell wall deficient bacterial cell. The last antibiotic is the beta lactam. The beta lactam antibiotics form a covalent bond with penicillin binding proteins having transpeptidase and carboxypeptidase activities. This inhibits the process of transpeptidation. Inhibition of the transpeptidation prevents the cross-linking of building block monomers in the peptidoglycan layer and ultimately results in the formation of cell wall deficient bacterial cell. So that's all about the mechanism of action of cycloserine, vancomycin, bacitracin and beta-lactam antibiotics. Thank you.